I'm not going to go back through all 20 chapters uh, that we've done, but I am just going to go back a little bit to last week uh, where James Gordon was talking about the, the cities of refuge. Uh, just to reiterate, the cities of F refuge were uh, basically for protection. Uh, they were evenly distribute out, distributed throughout all the land of Israel. Uh, so it's, it was said that uh, neither or no city of refuge was more than a day's journey from any other city of refuge or from any point in Israel. Um, so it wasn't within 10 miles or 20 miles, but it was within a day's journey, somewhere that you could most likely get to if you were in a need and running, you, you could get there in a day's journey. Um, and there was six of them throughout the land of Israel, and uh, we learned about those uh, in the previous two teachings from James in chapter 20. Those six cities were Golan, uh, Ramoth, Gilead, and Bezer. Uh, there was uh, on the east side of the Jordan. And then on the west side of the Jordan, we had uh, Kedesh, Shechem, and Kirjath Arba, or we commonly refer to that as Hebron. Uh, those three cities of refuge were on the west side of the, of the Jordan. Uh, and throughout that chapter, you know, there's a lot of talk about these cities of refuge and what they really meant. And despite their importance, um, the cities of refuge as such are not really going to be talked about anymore in the rest of Scripture, interestingly enough. Uh, they just don't come up in Scripture anymore. Um, so also a little map here. I don't know if James, I was here for his first week teaching, but I wasn't here for his second week teaching. So I think he had a map similar to this, but, you know, he mentioned how you go online and you look at different maps and their areas of territory that they were given were not usually this, you can never find two maps alike, I think is what uh, James alluded to. So this one is probably slightly different also than the one James showed. Um, but you can see in the dark, bold black are the six cities of refuge. Uh, I added the little Shiloh with the red star and the red text there because in verse 2, um, it's going to mention that all the Israelites, all the encampment of Israel, gathered in Shiloh to talk to jo um, J Joshua uh, and the elders in Shiloh. So they kind of picked up camp, and I'll mention this in a little bit, from Gilgal and moved the tabernacle to Shiloh, and this is when they, they started meeting in Shiloh. So... That's just kind of a quick summary of chapter 20, obviously not in depth at all. So now we're going to jump into Joshua chapter 21. We're going to cover just, it's a longer chapter, 40 some verses, looks like 45 verses. We're only going to cover 26 tonight. So let's go in chapter 21, verse 1. Then the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites came near to Eleazar the priest to Joshua the son of Nun, and to the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they spoke to them at Shiloh, in the land of Canaan, saying, The Lord commanded through Moses to give us cities to dwell in, with their common lands for their livestock. So the children of Israel gave to the Levites from their inheritance at the commandment of the Lord these cities and their common lands. So this word Levites is going to come up quite a bit. We're going to talk about who these Levites are. Uh, there was a tribe of Levi. Uh, I'll mention in a little while, you know, you know who oh, Levi had children. And then the, these children, uh, the, the offspring, these uh, family of priests are going to be the families that are inheriting all these different cities. Uh, or, or actually, yeah, the cities. So now in verse 4. Now the lot came out for the family of the Kohathites and the children of Aaron the priest who were of the Levites, had 13 cities by lot from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Simeon, and from the tribe of Benjamin. The rest of the children of Kohath had 10 cities by lot from the families of the tribe of Ephraim, from the tribe of Dan, and from the half tribe of Manasseh. So half the tribe of Manasseh, you can see from this map, was on the west side. The other half was on the east side of that tribe of Manasseh. And the children of Gershon, verse 6, had 13 cities by lot from the families of the tribe of Issachar, from the tribe of Asher, from the tribe of Naphtali, and from the half-tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. Verse 7, the children of Merari, according to their families, had 12 cities from the tribe of Reuben, from the tribe of Gad, and from the tribe of Zebulun. Verse 8, and the children of Israel gave these cities with their common lands by lot to the Levites, as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses. So they gave from the tribe of the children of Judah, and from the tribe of 
the children of Simeon, these cities, which are designated by name, which were for the children of Aaron, one of the families of the Kohathites, who were of the children of Levi, for the lot was theirs first. And they gave them Kirjath Arba. Arba was the father of Anak, which is Hebron, in the mountains of Judah, with the common land surrounding it. Verse 12. But the fields of the city and its villages they gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as his possession. Thus to the children of Aaron, the priest gave the priest they gave Hebron with its common land, a city of refuge for the slayer, Libna with its common land, Jatir with its common land, Ashtamoa with its common land, Olan with its common land, Debir with its common land, Ain with its common land, Juta with its common land, and Beth Shemosh with its common land, nine cities from those two tribes, and from the tribe of Benjamin, Gibeon with its common land, Geba with its common land, Anathoth with its common land, and Almon with its common land, four cities. All the cities of the children of Aaron the priests were thirteen cities with their common lands. Almost done. Verse 20. And the families of the children of Kohath, the Levites, the rest of the children of Kohath, even they had the cities of their lot from the tribe of Ephraim. For they gave them Shechem with its common land in the mountains of Ephraim, a city of refuge for the slayer, Gezer with its common land, Gibzaim with its common land, and Beth Horon with its common land, four cities. And from the tribe of Dan, Eltica with its common land, Gibeathon with its common land, Agilon with its common land, and Gath Ramon with its common land, four cities. And from the half-tribe of Manasseh, Tanakh, with its common land, and Gath Ramon, with its common land, two cities. All the ten cities with their common lands were for the rest of the families of the children of Kohath. So there's more to go on, obviously. We'll touch on that next week, but I'm just going to uh, uh, go over verses 1 through 26 tonight. So here we have on the slide the six cities of refuge, which were part of the inheritance of the 48 cities that we're going to read that the Levites are going to receive as an inheritance from the 12 different tribes. So just uh, to catch up to what we already read, I know, but it's just kind of a refresher to keep us uh, in context of what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, verse 1. Then the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites came near to Eleazar the priest, to Joshua the son of Nun, and to the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel. All right, so they came, and the leaders knew that they were not to be given land. Remember, these are the Levites that we're talking about now. They were not to be given land like the tribes were. The Levites only received cities. So that's uh, the kind of the main difference that we see between the tribe, even though there was a tribe of Levite, Levi, there was a separate group of priests, the Levites, part of this tribe of Levi. They were, did not receive land as an inheritance, but they received the cities and the so-called suburbs. So the suburbs is what they needed to raise their uh, farmland and their cattle. So whatever crops they may have had and the animals that they were raising, they also had these so-called suburbs um, that we'll read about in a, in a little bit also. So besides the six cities of refuge, as we just looked at, 42 additional cities are going to be given to the Levites um, proportionally from each of the 12 tribes. So meaning the bigger tribes, meaning the more land that they had, the more people they had in their tribe, they would end up giving more cities of their land to the Levites. The smaller tribes would give fewer cities to uh, the, the Levites. So we know this directed, directive was given by Mo. Mo, you know Moses. We're tight like this, so I call him Mo. Okay. <laughs> um, so you say, what directive? Well, I'm glad you ask. We're going to be asking a lot of questions tonight. So when I, I find myself trying to find information in a chapter, um, you know, there's a whole lot of cities that we read here, but I was trying to dig, so I started asking myself a lot of questions. So what directive did I just mention that Moses gave to Joshua to tell these people? Well. Since you asked, we're going to go and look at Numbers 35, 1 through 3. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give the Levites cities to dwell in from the inheritance of their possession. And you shall also give the Levites common land around the cities. They shall have the cities to dwell in, and their common land shall be for their cattle, for their herds, 
and for all their different animals. So there's the directive that I just alluded to um, that Joseph had from Moses to tell the priests to give this information to the, to the Levites. But we're not done. Verses 4 through 5 say, The common land of the cities which you will give the Levites shall extend from the wall of the city outward a thousand cubits. Who remembers what a cubit is? So, okay, that's good dimension from the fingertips down to your elbow from the common man. It's roughly in our uh, imperial units, 18 inches, roughly. So a foot and a half. So a thousand of those foot and a halves um, is how far this, the, the measure outside of the city, measure out a thousand cubits. And then you shall measure outside the city on the east side 2,000 more cubits, on the south side 2,000 cubits, west side 2,000, and the north side 2,000 cubits. The, shitty, the city <laughs> shall be in the middle. This shall belong to them as common lands for the city. And now among the cities you will give to the Levites, you shall appoint six cities of refuge to which a manslayer may flee. Uh, and to these you shall add 42 cities. So all the cities you will give to the Levites shall be 48 cities. These you shall give with their common land. All right, so there we have um, some information about these 42 cities. And I was able to find another map. Oops, I didn't finish verse 8 yet. Darn it. And the cities which you shall give from the possession of the children of Israel, from the larger tribe you shall give many, from the smaller you shall give few. Each shall give some of its cities to the Levites in proportion to the inheritance that each receives. So I touched on that a second ago, so that's the, the directive that I was alluding to. And here's the map of the town for the Levites. Uh, notice over here in the left, a little darker brown at the top, the descendants of Aaron, the Kohathites. You can see down here in the darker brown area. And the little black dots, those are the numbers of cities that each of the tribe gave to the Levites. So you can see from the tribe of Judah in Simeon, they gave eight cities. From the tribe of Reuben, four cities. Uh, Dan, four. Ephraim, four. Gad, four. You get the idea. Uh, the tribe on the west side of the Jordan, Manasseh gave two. On the east side, they gave two. Naphtali, smaller tribe, they only ended up giving three. Asher, four. Issachar, four. So you can see those are the different tribes and how many uh, cities. If you add up all the little black dots, you'll get 48 cities. All right. Verse 2 that I alluded to earlier that's going to mention the city of Shiloh. And they spoke to them at Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, The Lord commanded through Moses to give us cities to dwell in with their common lands for our livestock. So we're going to be asking a lot of questions tonight as we read through um, these 26 uh, verses. Uh, asking good questions is a good way to learn. Um, so never be bashful about asking good questions. I think it was Mark Twain that said something along the lines of, I'm probably paraphrasing because I, I didn't go look for the quote. I just kind of have always remembered the paraphrase, you know, that basically the, the only uh, bad question is the question not asked. So that may not be exactly what he said, but it's kind of the theme of what he was saying. Uh, that it's, also, that's al it's always good to be inquisitive and ask questions. That's how we learn. Um, so the question is, uh, why in the city of Shiloh? I'm glad you asked. The tabernacle of meeting had been moved from their other congressional area of Gilgal, which was just there west of the Jordan River. Um, so it was up there near that body of water there near the top just west of it, just north of it and just west of it was where the city of Gilgal was. Uh, so now they moved down, if I go back to my previous map, down to where Shiloh is. So you can see the same two bodies of water, but they moved quite a bit south from Gilgal to Shiloh um, to have a location now maybe more central, uh, but this is now where the tabernacle of meeting uh, that they were traveling with is now going to be located, and this is where they decided to meet. And we read about that back in Joshua 18, verse 1. So I'm just going to flip back and read that. Joshua 18, verse 1 says, Now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. 
So that was read to us not too long ago, ago by whoever um, taught on chapter 18. Okay? Yep. I forget who teaches every chapter, but Mr. Steve did that one. So verse 3. So the children of Israel gave to the Levites. So this uh, name Levites is coming up quite a bit. I've already uh, mentioned a little bit who they are. We'll talk more about them, their derivation, I guess, in, in a little bit. From the inheritance at the commandment of the Lord, these cities and their common lands. So I asked myself, well, how many of these, why do they need 48 cities? How many different, how many Levites were there? Well, I'm glad you asked. Good question. So let's go to Numbers 26, 62. Now those who were numbered of them were 23,000, every male from a month old and above, for they were not numbered among the other children of Israel because there was no inheritance to, to be given to them among the children of Israel. Remember the Levites, no land, just cities. So we have 23,000 Levite men are scattered throughout the 48 cities, which equates to an average of 479.2 Levites per city. Ouch, I'd hate to be that point two in every city, right? Um, so there's basically 480 different Levites in each city. So that's a, that's a pretty good chunk. Can you imagine if we had 480, 480 pastors in Kernersville? I, doubt, I don't think we have that many pastors here. Well, maybe we do with assisting pastors, you add up all the churches. But that's a healthy amount of Levites, priests, that they have in each one of these cities. And remember, each one of these cities is, well, I was going to say it here, tradition says that there was no more than 10 miles between any Levitical city throughout all of Israel. So remember, these are different than the cities of refuge. The cities of refuge were no more than a day's journey. So that could have been 20, 25 miles, whatever you could run uh, as quick as you wanted to away from your avenger. That was maybe trying to track you down. But there was 48 of these Levitical cities, and they were only 10 miles apart in any one direction. If you wanted to seek out a priest and find or ask any question that you had about anything that had been taught in years past, you could do that easily in just a few hours' journey to get to one of these Levitical cities. These were significant cities, no doubt, for teaching and maintaining the Word of God. The Word of God was scattered throughout the land, and that's a good thing. I mean, it's not, it wasn't just focused in one area. It wasn't all focused in Jerusalem yet. It was scattered throughout all of Israel somewhat equally, and that was God's intention and God's plan before it got kind of divided kingdom that we're going to read about way in the future when we get into King David and Solomon, and then Solomon and afterwards they get the divided kingdom where now they're just kind of worshiping down in Jerusalem, and then they got another calf set up in Dan further north in the country. But right now it's all good and well according to God's perfect plan, they're scattered out throughout the land pretty much equally. The priests are scattered equally as well throughout these 48 cities. So why did it end up happening this way? I'm glad you asked. Can you believe this was prophesied to happen? Good question. That's what I asked myself. So let's go look. Genesis 49, verse 5 through 7. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments, brothers, you remember these are brothers of uh, uh, Jacob's children. So the 12 sons of Jacob essentially are the 12 tribes. Um, Simeon and Levi were two sons of Jacob. So they're brothers. Simeon and Levi are brothers, instruments, and this is Jacob on his deathbed back here in Genesis um, chapter 49, near the very end of Genesis. So Jacob, uh, um, what's the, the youngest son of Jacob? Who well, not quite him, the one, Joseph. I knew it started with a J, I couldn't think of Joseph. So Joseph had um, become like most powerful person next to Pharaoh in Egypt, right? And there had a famine in the land and he brought his whole family down, Jacob, and the, I think, 70 or 71 family members that were still alive from the land of Canaan because the famine was going on. He brought them back down. Jacob and all his family, they settled in Goshen, there in Egypt. Uh, and now he's finally about to pass on and he's um, uh, laying out the blessings on all 12 of his children. And he's uh, laying out the blessings here in this uh, Genesis 49, 5 through 7, on these two specific men. Um, and the reason I came here, remember, is because we're talking about the tribe of Levi. 
So Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. I didn't have this in my notes, but I'm trying to remember. I believe it was Simeon and Levi. They revenged their sister's death that some people in a city, I can't remember the name of, had killed their daughter and raped their sister. Um, Tamar? What's that? Started with a D, didn't it? <laughs> this is what happens when you go off topic. <laughs> Right. Okay. Right. So, and to get, seek revenge for what the these men did to the, their sister, they convinced them to get circumcised. So, on like day two, when they're in the most excruciating amount of pain, still trying to re recuperate, Simeon and Levi they go back into this town and they murder, kill a lot of these men that are just kind of incapacitated and not able to. Yes. Dinah in Genesis 34. Thank you. That's what happens when you go off topic. I didn't have that in my notes, but I thought I could remember most of it. Um, so here you can see, for in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. And notice here it says, Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. So they necessarily weren't cursed themselves. But it was their anger that was cursed and their wrath that Jacob is cursing here because they were angry men back in this day. And they, they, they kind of came up, devised this cruel plan to get back uh, to revenge their, their sister. And notice what Jacob says here. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So how cool is this? I, 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 took, I didn't really know what this understood or what this meant. So I said, you know, what does this mean? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Simeon has no borders among the sons of Jacob. What does that mean? And Levi is scattered among the sons of Jacob. What does that mean? Well, notice on this map that we're just looking at, if you read the inheritance of the land that Simeon got, he has no borders. I think on one of the maps that James showed last week, it just kind of showed a circle inside of the land of Judah. And that's kind of what this is showing here, too. Judah slash Simeon. They kind of share the same land. Simeon doesn't really have any borders. So going back to that curse, it says that I will divide them in Jacob and scatter. So divide them in Jacob is uh, Simeon, essentially. He has no borders. He's uh, not really separated um, from the other tribes. And what does it mean about Levi is scattered? Well, we just got done reading. The Levites are now spread out over all 48 cities that they were given from the other tribes' inheritance. So they don't have their own specific land either. They're spread out. And that's, to me, that's the answer to um, uh, what Jacob was prophesying over them when he says, and I'll scatter them in Israel. And he's talking about just these two tribes, uh, Simeon and Levi. And that's what we can see here on this map. Um, so I th that was kind of a little thing I, uh, I, I read about. And then I also was listening to, again, we should be listening to other pastors. And I think this one, when, um, Joe Fosht actually brought this up as well. Uh, this idea of Judah and Simeon. Uh, Simeon essentially not having his own external borders. He was inside the tribe or inside the land of Judah. So through God's providence, we're going to see that the Levites will go from having their anger and wrath being cursed to receiving God's blessings. So where might we see that? I'm going to go to Exodus 32 now and read verses 25 to 26. Now when Moses saw that the people were unrestrained, for Aaron had not restrained them to their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to Moses, to him. So why did, you know, this is, you know, Moses is coming down off the mountain. The tribes are, 
having a, a, a orgy, a party going on. You know, all the, the gold and the earrings and the bracelets and the necklaces were gathered, thrown into the fire, and out pops this golden calf, right? And Moses says, or Aaron says, dude, how'd that happen? I had no idea. But just a pre previous few verses before that, it talked about how Aaron sculpted this golden calf. And then when his big brother gets there, he says, I had nothing to do with it. I don't know what you're talking about. How'd this happen? I don't know. So it's, uh, I mean, that just kind of goes to the point out, you know, how real the Bible is. It didn't leave out little, it, it, left, out, it left in all the bad stuff about these men, about men in general, like we are. Um, so I just thought that was cool how the sons of Levi, now why did they align themselves now with Moses? Well, it might have been because, you know, Moses, Aaron, Miriam, they're all, those were the three, two brothers and a sister um, lineage of Levi. And these are the Levites, again, lineage of Levi, the brother. So they, they just, at this point in time, they wanted to right their wrong, essentially. They wanted to stand now on the good side with Moses. Um, and they did. So after reading about the curses, on their wrath and their anger, now we can see that they're getting, they're gonna receive blessing from here going forward as the Levites, as the priests for, the, um, for Israel. So remember that the sins of the father, uh, meaning Simeon and Levi, way back in where we're talking about in Genesis, now remember we're down into Exodus, many, many years later, uh, their offspring, so remember the sins of the father, the Simeon and Levi, they do not need to pass on to their offspring or their children. And we know this is a scriptural situation that the children do not have to inherit the sins of the father and, the, and vice versa. So where is this mentioned? I'm glad you asked. Uh, let's go to verse uh, Ezekiel 18, verse 20. The soul who sins shall die. The person who sins commits the sin shall die if they don't confess. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. So there's our scriptural reference for why the offspring, this, uh, the children of Simeon and Levi, they don't need to inherit the sins that their fathers did way back when they came up with this cruel plan to go in and purposely premeditatedly murder uh, the men of that city for, to revenge their sister. So now that we get past uh, verse 3 in Joshua 21, uh, we're going to read through verses 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8, and we're going to uh, just catch up with the rest of the story here. Now the lot came out for the families of the Kohathites. Kind of look for this word L-O-T, lot. You're going to see this word lot show up five different times in the next five verses. Now the lot came out for the families of the Kohathites, and the children of Aaron the priest, who were of the Levites, had 13 cities by lot from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Simeon, and from the tribe of Benjamin. The rest of the children of Kohath had 10 cities by lot from the families of the tribe of Ephraim, from the tribe of Dan, and from the half-tribe of Manasseh. And the children of Gershon had 13 cities by lot from the families of the tribe of Issachar, from the tribe of Asher, from the tribe of Naphtali, and from the half-tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. The children of Merari, according to their families, had 12 cities from the tribe of Reuben, from the tribe of Gad, and from the tribe of Zebulun. And the children of Israel gave these cities with their common lands by lot to the Levites as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses. So verse 4 13 cities were given, verse 5, 10 more cities, verse 6, 13 more cities, and verse 7, 12 more cities. So we have 13 plus 10 plus 13 plus 12. Add those up, you get 48. So those are the, the 48 cities uh, and where they came from. So the cities were to be uh, determined, the cities that were given were determined by lot. The word lot occurs five times in those five verses that I just read. And by lot was a God-directed method of choosing these cities. So most likely, if you left it up to the, the men in the group, uh, they would have noticed, okay, I've, I've got this amount of land. I'm over here in Bashan. I've got some huge cities here that were built by 
don't know who they were. We conquered them a few years ago, so now we got their land we can take over. Um, I want to keep this city, but the city was determined by lot, so they didn't really have a choice in the matter. Um, so it kind of took that part of the equation off the table. It was given by lot. Um, this isn't in my notes either, but I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure that well, we don't know exactly what by lot meant. I mean, did they throw some dice? Uh, or, or was it a, a black stone and a white stone? That has been hypothesized. You know, Pastor David has talked about that. He's even had the big black stone and the white stone up on the podium uh, and talked about that, um, sometimes in a different context. Uh, also in scripture, if you're reading through it, you might have come across the words um, Urum and Thumen, Thumum. Uh, and those things were maybe stones. We don't know exactly what they were. They were held onto by the priests, though. Uh, and I think they, you know, they had the big breastplate with the 12 different colored stones on their breastplate on their chest. And they may have been like a little pouch or something where these stones or dice or bones or whatever they were, this urum and thumum, thumum that they had that when it was time to cast lots, again, when they say cast lots, we're not told exactly what a lot is or what it means. Um, but anyhow, this was a God-directed way of choosing these cities. And God was in control of every aspect of this inheritance process. I mean, he, God was making sure that the right tribes got the right pieces of the land, and then the Levites got the right cities that they needed. So why were the children of Kohath, Gershon, and Merari given all these Levitical cities? Glad. All right, glad you asked. <laughs> Levi, this is way back, back in Genesis now, where we're talking about the uh, children of Jacob. Levi was one of the children of Jacob. Levi had three sons. Guess what their names were? Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. So Kohath's son, Amram, that name may sound familiar, he was the father of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. So Amram was the son of Kohath, who was a son of Levi. So Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, these are the three divisions of priests that we end up with now at this point in Joshua 21. The priests were strategic, you say, you say that, strategically located to serve in the temple and in the territory that remained in the hands of the descendants of Judah through the years before and following the Babylonian exile. So you're going to read about the priests, these Levitical priests, for decades, if not centuries, to come. Because we're going to hear about these priests serving, rotating, um, what is it, twice, probably twice a month, because I think there was 24 different courses. courses of priests where they would come in and serve in the temple. Um, and, and this happened through all the time of David and Solomon and many years after that. Um, that we have these um, priests serving in the temple. All right, so wrapping up with those verses, now we're going to move on to verses 9 through 12. So they gave from the tribe of the children of Judah and from the tribe of the children of Simeon these cities which are designated by name, which were for the children of Aaron, one of the families of the Kohathites, who were of the children of Levi, for the lot was theirs first. And they gave them Kirjath Arba. Arba was the father of Anak, which is Hebron in the mountains of Judah, with the common land surrounding it. But the fields of the city and its villages they gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as his possession. So who remembers Caleb? Glad you asked. <laughs> Uh, one of the 12 men that spied out the land, he was pretty much directed by Moses to go out with who? Joshua. Joshua and Caleb went out to spy the land with the other 10. We are given the names of the other 10, but nobody remembers the names of the other 10 um, because they came back with a bad report. They came back with a, a negative report. Um, but. Well, that's the way it was meant to go, right? Um, I mean, if everybody would have listened to Joshua and Caleb, we would have been missing several pages of scripture here where they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, and, but they needed to go through that. So that's why the, the people convinced Moses that listen to the other 10 and not Joshua and Caleb. It's a different story. 
Uh, so they did this at Moses' request and returned with a positive report from the land of Canaan that the land of Canaan, they should, this is what these two thought, that they should go in and conquer the land of, the, of Canaan. Uh, wipe out these tribes that God told them to wipe out and kill these giants that they looked down on them like they were grasshoppers, Scripture says. So they must have been really big men. Um, he actually, and, and Caleb here, we're talking about Caleb here briefly, he actually requested the city of Hebron and it was given to him. Well, you might say, well, where did it say that? Let's backtrack a few, verse, or a few chapters now to Joshua 14. So Joshua 14, verses 12 to 15. Now therefore, this is Caleb talking, Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, of the, drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron, or Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kirjath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, the giants, uh, or some of the giants. Then the land had rest from war. So there's a, a little bit about Caleb, just to refresh your memory. So now continuing on, uh, verses 13 through 19, back in chapter 21. Thus to the children of Aaron the priest, they gave Hebron with its common land, a city of refuge for the slayer, Libna with its common land, Jatir with its common land, Eshtema, or Eshtemoa with its common land, Olan with its common land, Debir with its common land, In with its common land, Uta with its common land, and Beth Shemesh with its common land, nine cities from those two tribes. And from the tribe of Benjamin, Gibeon with its common land, Geba with its common land, Anoth, Anathoth with its common land, and Almon with its common land, four cities. All the cities of the children of Aaron, the priests, were 13 cities with their common lands. So it's nice and big, you guys can read that, right? All right. So, summarizing those uh, several passages, uh, these were all the cities given to the children of Aaron. So this passage of scripture started off with uh, divvying up all the cities that were gonna go to the children of Aaron. So there's incredible detail here given, uh, and God doesn't leave anything to chance. I alluded to this just a little bit ago about how God is making it very clear exactly which cities are to be given to the Levites. Uh, every bit of it speaks to God's faithfulness. He's not gonna let any little thing go unsaid He's going to make sure that what he promised years ago to Abraham and his descendants, that they were going to get this land of Canaan. And they were given the land of Canaan, but we're going to talk about it in just a little bit. They didn't take all of the land of Canaan. Even though they were given it, it was like a gift that they didn't open. They didn't take, or they weren't able to try and take it all or claim it all, maybe is a better word. So let's uh, wrap up the last few verses here, verses 20 through 26. And the families of the children of Kohath, the Levites, the rest of the children of Kohath, even they had the cities of their lot from the tribe of Ephraim. Bless you. For they gave them Shechem with its common land in the mountains of Ephraim, a city of refuge for the slayer, Gezer with its common land, Gibzaim with its common land, and Beth Haran with its common land, four cities. And from the tribe of Dan, Eltekah with its common land, Gibeathon with its common land, Agilon with its common land, and Gath, Ramon with its common land, four cities. And from the half-tribe of Manasseh, Tanakh with its common land, and Gath, Ramon with its common land, two cities. All the ten cities with their common land were for the rest of the families of the children of Kohath. So the previous section that we just read through was for Aaron, now this section that we went through is for Kohath. Next week when we get together, we're going to read some more cities that are given to Merari. Um, so these are all cities given to the children of Kohath. Some of the cities were not actually in Israel's possession, even though they were given these lands. And, it, and some of these cities appear never to have been in Israel's control for any length of time. 
even though God is spelling out, see these cities over here? I'm giving them to you. I know you don't have control of them yet. You haven't conquered them yet. And some of them you never will, but I'm giving them to you. That's what God did. He promised this, like I said, a long time ago. And some may say, prove it to me, Tom. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Let's go look at some verses where this is actually mentioned. And it's in the same book. So just go back a little bit to Joshua 15, verse 63. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah could not drive them out. But the Jebusites dwell with the children of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. All right, let's skip ahead a little bit to Joshua 16.10. And they did not drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites to this day and have become forced labor. So the Ephraimites didn't kill them all, didn't wipe them out like they were supposed to. They kind of compromised and forced them in to be laborers for them. Um, so that was another situation where they didn't completely claim the land. And then Joshua 17, verses 12 and 13. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land. And it happened when the children of Israel grew strong that they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly drive them out. So again, the land was given. It just wasn't completely taken or claimed as God had intended. So therefore, much land remained to be taken even after it had been allotted to all the different tribes. So what might the life lesson be here? When God gifts us something, it may still require some effort on our part to fully own it. When God gifts us something, that could be fill in the blank. It could be financial blessing. It could be a spouse. It could be a child to raise. It could be fill in the blank. Just because God gifts us with something doesn't mean it's going to be free and clear or easy or all smooth sailing from here on out. It may require some effort to actually receive that gift, but if you just leave it under the tree, like Pastor David has mentioned before, is it like a Christmas gift? How many times have you seen any of your kids or you yourself on December 27th, there's still presents under the tree? Oh, heck no. They're all opened, aren't they? But if there were something there, that would be like receiving a gift and not opening it. So sometimes it requires effort on our part to fully own it. So as an example, the promised land of Canaan was given by God, but they still needed to fight for it and conquer it to take it or to claim it. So it still required effort. And they tried in some areas, and they just weren't completely successful. But they were able to um, inhabit the land in some areas, they didn't conquer everybody, but they forced them into labor. So it's somewhat of a compromise. So in summary, the Levites were scattered all over the 12 tribes of Israel in 48 different Levitical cities. Of those 48 Levitical cities, six of them were cities of refuge, a safe place. This way, the Israelites could be taught by the Levites that lived among them, Remember, there was roughly 480 Levite priests in every one of these 48 cities. The Levites were chosen as examples of faithfulness and holiness. The Levites were to instill religious values and knowledge of the true God to the people living in that city or anybody that came to that city asking to know more about the living and true God. So I'm done asking questions for tonight, but I'd ask you guys to read ahead to finish the rest of the chapter and ask yourself some questions uh, for us to talk about next week, verses 27 through 45. And with that, let's bow our hearts and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before you and uh, read through these passages of Scripture. And I pray, Lord, that there was some pieces of information there that were maybe new and uh, that we can all leave here tonight and go home and think about, read, read up on further, and uh, Lord, just further our understanding of the, the tribe of Levi and just how all this land of inheritance came about and maybe learn more about what casting lots meant or dig up and look up, uh, you know, the Urim and the Thummim 
Uh, or maybe go back and read about Jacob and his 12 sons in, in the book of Genesis that we mentioned. Uh, all these different things that I alluded to, Lord, for reference material uh, could be good jumping off points for uh, uh, you know, some good Bible study time. Help me, Lord, to do that as well as I dig into the rest of this chapter and put my notes together for next week. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to, to gather together as men. And Lord, we uh, pray that you help us to continue in the Acts 242 mindset of uh, breaking bread and fellowship uh, and just gathering together and spending time together. And Lord, again, we thank you for this blessed time. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said...